what I loved about music and what I still love about music is it can have transportative qualities. The first time I heard California Dreamin' by the Mamas and Papas, I didn't even know what California was. But by the time the song ended, I knew I missed it. The best musicians and the best writers are essentially tour guides through the interior of a world that you cannot on your own touch. And I think that's something I'm always chasing. I'm Hanif Abdurraqib, a music critic, essayist, and poet. My earliest music influences were all visual. They were all album covers or music videos. I grew up with hip hop. I grew up loving hip hop before loving anything else. And this was in an era where so many people look cool. Some of my first images, like LL Cool J walking with a panther, literally the album, but also the literal photo of him with a panther, or Slick Rick drowning in gold, and these kind of things that seemed wholly unattainable in the world I was in. Of course, as I got older, I started to shape my pleasures and influences around sound and choruses and how narratives were built into music, which is something that I still return to. I realized the whole time I just was searching for storytellers wherever I could find them. I cut my teeth writing music reviews for local papers. There was a point where editors had stopped coming to me for work because the criticism about my reviews were they were too poetic and too meandering and they didn't get to the point quick enough. And I didn't take it as a slight. I took it as an opportunity to hone my craft. I started in Poetry Slam, a space that still means a great deal to me because there's some real-time editing that happens in a room when you are engaging in a Poetry Slam. And so poetry was my way in. Go Ahead in the Rain is a cultural exploration of the group A Tribe Called Quest, complete with letters written to the group's members and loved ones and a personal history of my listening experience with the group and just growing up loving hip-hop in the 90s and early 2000s. There are modes of hip-hop and sampling and crew building and collaboration that, that wouldn't exist today if not for A Tribe Called Quest. A Little Devil in America is a series of essays exploring the history of Black performance in the United States, and it works to extend the idea of what performance is. And so, of course, there are essays about very physical performances, be it Josephine Baker or Mary Clayton's voice. But there's also essays about the performance of affection or playing cards or, you know, the way that fear presents itself as a performance. So I really wanted to expand the ideas of performance and performativity and make them as wide as possible. I don't approach my work from a point of expertise, which means I'm not even an expert on myself or my own history. I'm very much a spectator in the museum of my own making. It means that my curiosity with my own history aligns with my curiosity with your own history or anyone's own history. And so when I bring myself in the work, it's often from a point of questioning or testing the waters of memory. What keeps me going back to writing is the excitement of reformatting my own imagination. I do think that in my writing, my impulse is still, how do I cut to the feeling? If I am feeling something, it only makes sense that there's a path through which I can articulate that feeling. DNA of that feeling might be unique to me, but I think I can have someone say, wait a minute, I felt something like this, perhaps in a different way, but I'm here with you. And that last part, I think, is what I keep coming to. Because once we get that, we can really play, we can really go somewhere.